All right, guys, let's come over and grab the uh, new voila, a compressor you can actually put in the front seat of your car and carry it. Look at that, the JTS, guys. Let's take a look. All right, guys, today we have something new, something I've been wanting and uh, got in contact with a buddy of mine, uh, met him at SHOT Show, and he introduced me to a new item that he uh, wants me to test. We made a deal, and today here we are. Something I've been wanting. A portable compressor. I've been wanting to try these for the longest now. And I know everybody's gonna say, well, you have a compressor, you have five C SCBA tanks, you have this, you have that. Well, the thing is, guys, <clears throat> with these air guns, as you guys all know, it never ends. I'll just say it the way it really is. It never ends, guys. There's always a reason for something else. Um, I really need this because when I go on out of town trips where like say to Arizona um, and I drive, I'm at the mercy of my carbon fiber tanks and I am at the mercy of the weather. So if it's not 120 degrees where the tanks stay filled up to 4,500 PSI all the time, if it's 60, I'm going to lose pressure in that tank, especially when I bring the tanks outside and start using them. And when you don't have your Alkin or another compressor, it pisses you off. I'm just going to be straight up. There is no other, there is no other way to say it. So something like this affords me to be able to use either some type of inverter or a battery backup system power supply system as well as my truck and i don't have 110 volts i don't have 220 but i do have 12 volts and actually i do have 110 volts here so we're going to see this is 100 percent filled we're going to run this off of here and then we're going to run it on 12 volts this compressor runs on 110 volts 220 or 12 volts you cannot get them crossed up the way the circuitry is designed no matter what you have the switch on the side on it's only going to work on whatever setting you have it on so if you have it on 110 and you have it plugged up to your truck it will not turn on until you turn the switch the rocker switch to 12 volt Vice versa, if you're at home and you have it plugged in the wall and the rocker switch is on 12 volts, it will not run until you turn the rocker switch to 110 volts. There's a button up top or switch up top that you can turn it from 220 to 110, um, which is pretty cool. You can also set your pressure uh, for the quick uh, shutoff or for the shutoff, I should say. Um, you can set your pressure to what you want it to uh, shut off at. In the back here, you have your hose, which wraps around a built-in uh, containment thing that they made here. I don't know what to call it, but it's got its own like little rack here, as well as your 12 volt DC power cord. Um, on this side, you have your on and off. You have your bleed screw that bleeds the pressure out. Right here, you have your start and you have your off. When you plug this unit in, guys, it will you will hear a fan come on that is a fan on the inverter that always stays on as long as there's power in the unit so if you guys have this thing plugged up to your truck we're just going to go with the truck for right now i highly suggest and common sense should tell you guys if you're running something like this it draws a lot of current a lot of amps back on this side again we also have the fill whip so there's the fill whip there is the uh, DC cables. Here you have your 110 power input. If you turn it on this side, you have different fans that are cooling different things. You have one that cools your inverter. You got one up top that goes to the piston head. You have an exhaust fan. You have another fan on this side. You have one on the top. Um, the reason why you have all these fans, guys, is because it is not liquid cool or oil, oil cool. Um, you don't put anything in it. There's nothing in here. No, no liquid, no grease, no oil. Um, you just run it. And that's one of the things I really, really liked about it. 
on the bottom here you have uh basically like a where is it basically right here this is like a check valve so if you get any debris or anything like that where it's not filling you'd want to turn the unit off undo this clean it out because this can stop your gun from uh, being filled if it if it's stopping at like 2500 or 3000 and it won't go up any further the first thing they recommend is to try to take this off and check the check valve and make sure there's no debris in here so when you turn this the moisture is going to come out of this hose so that's all i got for right now guys you know what time it is it's time to run this damn thing so let's see what she does i'm going to try it on the uh the jackery first and see we're going to fill the notos the notos is off the reg 1900 psi to 3600 psi let's see how she does There it goes, you guys hear it? She's ready to rumble. We're gonna set the pressure, shut off pressure to 3,600 PSI. I'm gonna turn it this way, guys. All right, got the pressure set, 35, 36. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, hit the start button, let's turn it on. There you go. She's a working. Let's see how far it drains down my jackery. <laughs> Ew, this thing is saying 2,000 psi already. Look at that, you're at about 3,000 psi? check the gauge yep the gauge on the gun it was down to 2000 it is now up this thing is it's pumping it's pumping look at that um guys if this thing turns off That's three minutes. That's about three minutes. That's about three minutes. Holy cow. That took about three minutes. And I'm down 5% on my Jackery. And this is a small Jackery. So if you got a bigger one or some other type of 110 outlet while you're camping, this is small. And the air coming off of here is very cool. All right, guys, I'm actually super impressed. Yes, that was the very first fill. I didn't even run it at home. I plugged it in. I made sure the inverter fan turned on. It did. <clears throat> I think I turned it on. Yeah, I did. I hit start one time, but I didn't have it pumping any air. And I just wanted to make sure that it turned over. This is the very first time you guys saw it live that I actually ran it to fill any gun or any length of time. Let's head to the garage. Let's fill some more guns. All right, guys, we're back home from the range. We're going to do a simple test. In the background, yes, that is the new AEA Max 457. It is on zero. Not sure if you can see the gauge or not, but there is no air pressure in it. Um, it is on zero. We're going to see how long it takes to fill the tank. I will find out the exact cc's of the tank and scroll it across the screen right now while i'm talking we're going to set it to fill to 4500 psi let's see how long it takes there's my phone with the timer zeroed out and we're going to get started all right so we're four minutes and about 15 seconds into it yep it's over a thousand psi so for every four minutes is basically a thousand psi of pressure in four minutes so by my calculations 4500 psi to zero in that gun should take 18 minutes let's see how close it is okay we've just passed the eight minute mark so we should be over 2000 psi 
And there we go. We're just a little over 2,000 PSI, guys. Four minutes for every 1,000 PSI is what I'm getting. A little bit faster, but we'll say four minutes for 1,000 PSI. We're on the road. To 18 minutes to fill up the AEA Max. Two from empty to full. All right, guys, here we go. It's going to turn off any moment. Let me get situated. We are, there it is, 19 minutes 56 seconds. I stopped it three seconds later, but 19 minutes 56 seconds to go from zero to 4,500 PSI in the AEA Max. Okay, next up is a short 30 second clip showing the compressor running off my truck's power. Please run your vehicle's engine while using this compressor. At the filming of this video in this portion, I have had this compressor since February. It has run flawlessly. It has performed flawlessly. That's pretty much going to do it, guys. You know, uh, there's not really much more to talk about. I think on the next video, guys, go. All right, sit for now. So far, the JTS is working wonders. We're going to put this thing through its paces outdoors. I'm probably going to use it to predominantly charge the AEA 45 up to 4500 to do some testing that I know everybody's going to want to know how powerful is that gun. What this thing is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to continuously fill up to 4500. I'll be able to take one shot, top it off using this, and then do another bullet at full power and then keep going that way i have all my 4500 psi questions answered because i know you guys are going to want to know that's the point of having this it's going to keep me from using all my scuba tanks and it's going to allow me to always top off to 4500 psi when i'm doing testing on the big bores this thing is awesome